Now, welcome back to Bo's Workshop. Today we're building a Carolina Dory. This is a Jeff Spiro design. He has a few different models. This is the Carolinian. The Carolinian is 18 feet, has about a six and a half foot beam. This will be a nice family fishing boat uh, where we can get out in the Gulf and do a little bit of cruising around. We can get in the flats and do some fishing. It has a real shallow draft. It's only about five inches of draft. So I think that this will be a very useful boat and it'll be easy to trailer around and get a little relaxation in this fall when this thing is finished. Today we're going to start with doing the layout. I have a piece of half inch sandy ply. I studied the blueprints and decided to cut a piece uh, a little bit longer than the widest frame and the, the height is the same as the transom. I'll have to lay out one frame on the other side of this board uh, because it's too tall but I don't like wasting plywood. I wasn't just going to sacrifice a whole piece to do a layout. So this uh, will be the layout board and it'll turn into the transom when it's said and done. When you start with the build, you start with some blueprints and there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can print it out in some eight by 11 and some of these smaller builds, I did it that way. Uh, this larger build, I went ahead and went to the print shop and had it printed on size C paper. Now I have actual scale drawings. And the way that I'll use those scale drawings, especially for designing the interior, I can put a piece of vellum over the, the hull, I can trace it out, and I can design the interior to scale, and that will benefit me in two ways. One, I can really estimate the exact amount of materials I would need. Second, I can make sure that it looks good. Third, I can make sure that it'll function exactly the way that I want to, and then that way I can make multiple drawings until I find the design that I like the most. The first step to laying out this project is to pick, get a piece of plywood. It could be a scrap piece. Uh, I don't waste a lot of wood. I don't have scrap laying around. This particular piece of plywood will be used for the transom, but I have the factory edge on the bottom and I've drawn a center line with my carpenter square and I'll base all my measurements off of that center. I'm going to start by laying out frame three. This is the widest frame. I based the dimensions of this plywood on this uh, widest frame. There's one frame that I'll have to do on the back side of this board because it's too tall for this piece of plywood. But to conserve the wood, this is the way I decided to do it. So with frame three, I'm going to take my measurement. It's all the measurements in the blueprint start from the center line and work out. So I'm going to take that bottom dimension of frame three and I'm going to lay it out with the, with the tape measure. I'm just going to put a little dot at the bottom of the plywood. Then I'm going to put a second dot at the width of the top of the frame. So now I have my two marks made and I'm going to look at the blueprints and I'm going to measure it a second time. I'm happy with the measurements. I'm going to now plot out a mark for the widest part of the frame at the top of the frame. So I'll start from this outside measurement and then I'll come up the appropriate distance using this carpenter square and I'm referencing the, the blueprints as I'm doing this. So. Double check the measurements. All right, so I'm happy with that. So now I have a dot plotted in the separate corner here. And then I have the mark on the plywood at the bottom. And now I can simply connect the dots. I'm using a mechanical pencil. 
I like that it keeps the lines nice and even. If you're using a regular pencil, if you roll the pencil as you're drawing the line, it tends to keep the, the lines nice and it keeps the lead wearing even. It helps you lay that out more precisely. So that's that frame number three. That's how tall the, the sides will be. That's the angle that we'll build the frames off of. Now we'll repeat on this other side. All right, we're laying out the second side. Just repeating the same steps that we did with the, with the first. Using a carpenter square to give the tape measure something to lean against. So we have both plot points. And we have the frame number three laid out. Come in, double check your measurements. I'm happy with that. Your frame number three is laid out. Another little trick that I found to be useful is I just labeled the lines. So we'll put frame three. I'll put it in a couple places. And then when I cut the the frames themselves and I label those and I put the bottom, I put the top. And then that way it helps me when I go to assemble everything. Frame number two. The bottom measurement. This frame's a little taller than frame number three, so keep looking at the blueprints, make sure that you're getting all the right measurements. Not quite as wide. I essentially just make an L, and that gives me a good reference line or a plotting point. Straight edge, go from the first plotting point to the second plotting point. See how close the lines get together, that's why I label every line. Because when you start making your frames, it's pretty easy to get out of shape. And I like to just make a little cut line, reference cut line at the top of the frame so that when I lay the 2x4 on there, I can just easily mark each side of the 2x4. You use this board because uh, Jeff says, well, if you're trying to cut it with a miter saw or these power tools, you're going to get a little off on the measurement. And the best that you can get with is within a couple of degrees. But when you're starting to span multiple feet of length, uh, a couple of degrees can make you way off. So the board allows you to lay out the frames very precisely. And then you can come in and sand and clean up and fare, you know, any slight discrepancies. And then that way, you have all the angles perfect and the frames are the same instead of relying on uh, you know, degrees and measurements well how accurate can you cut how accurate can you lay it out you know all these things come into play but laying it out on these boards really mitigates a lot of the you know, the, the skill aspect of trying to make something precise you know using machinery once you start getting in multiple plot points it's Kind of nice to, when you make your your first mark to lay out the line, if you number it, label it, put the transom, frame number four, that seems to help out a little bit. And then as I pan out here, you can see all these frames are at different angle, they're different lengths. 
I'm going to step back off of the piece and make sure everything looks the same. Once it gets completely laid out, of course you want to come back and double check all your measurements. This is probably one of the most important parts of the build. Uh, if you start getting these measurements off, it's going to cause you massive headaches. So double check, double check, triple check, however many times it takes, but just make sure it's right. Have all the lines of the frames laid out. I end up putting that frame seven on this side as well. That's why you kind of have this, all these cross lines. I'll come back in a couple hours and I'll double check all the measurements, make sure everything's good with my mind being fresh.